Hey, this is Jake. I'm one of the creators of Mido, and today I'm going to give you a quick overview of the tool, and then I'm going to show you how you can use Mido to process data before a model, and then I'm going to show you how you can download Mido yourself. So let's get started. So Mido is an extension into JupyterLab. So to render it, all I have to do is import the Mido sheet package, and then I have to call MidoSheet.Sheet, .sheet, which will render the Mido sheet here, which is our interface, our spreadsheet interface inside of JupyterLab. To get data into the tool, I can do one of a few things. So I can either pass in a data frame directly as an argument. If you're using a data frame above and the, and the cells above, you want to call them the MITRE sheet. Super simple to do, just pass in a data frame. Or we can pass in files directly, data sets we might have in our local file system or desktop or whatever it may be. I'll click the import button to do that, and then I can add files from my current folder. I'm going to choose zip code data 2010 and Amtrak 2010. I'll close this and we'll see that the different data sets appear as different tabs in the Mito sheet. Both of these data sets have this zip column here. So the first thing I want to do is join these together on the zip column. I can do that super easily by clicking the merge button here. This will open our merge modal, which will allow us to configure the merge. You'll notice that it automatically generated this new data frame, which is where the merge is going to take place and we can configure it over here. So we can decide what the merge is gonna be. That's the column that we're joining on. Zip and zip, it automatically detects that these columns are aligned between the two. So we can keep that as is. We can decide what sheets we want to join on. We only have two starting data sets here, but if you had you know, three or four, you could decide which sheets you wanna join on. Um, and now I'll, I'll decide uh, here what columns I want to keep in the merge. So everything here is good. I'm gonna close this. And then we get our merge data set here, and below we generate the code for that merge. So we generate the syntax, the Python for everything I do in this front end. So as I keep going through here, we'll notice more and more generated Python down here. Now that I'm in, in, in this merge data set, I can pivot on this, on this data if I need to. So I'm going to create a pivot table super quickly here. As my row, I'm going to put state, and then as my value here, I'm going to select uh, median income and mean. Now we get the mean median income for each state based on the data we have. I'll close this and below we generate the equivalent code for that pivot table. So a really really quick way to generate the syntax that we're trying to do here. Within this pivot, pivot table I can do some other things as well. Let's say I want to filter this data set here. Add a filter. Let's say I want to look at values greater than and we'll see it filters to that data. Oh, sorry, this was 5,000, negative 50,000, and now it filters to that data. I'll close this. Here is the code for that filter. I can also sort this data in ascending or descending order. There we go. Lots of other functionality you can do in the tool as well that I won't have time to get into, but some of those things are using spreadsheet functions within the tool to clean and edit and manipulate your data, which you can find in our documentation. You can also save and replay analyses, sort of like a macro. It's a super powerful feature. And, and then you can also you know, look at summary statistics and summary graphs for, for your data columns. But I want to now transition and show you actually how you can use Mito in a real workflow. So I'm going to come over to this notebook over here. We have a Mito sheet here that I've already set up. And what I've done in this Mito sheet here is that I'm preparing a data set that was originally in two separate parts, but both of them had this ID number column. You can see ID number and ID number. So what I did is I actually merged them together on the ID number column, creating this whole data set. And then I pivoted, or sorry, I, I filtered this data set here to see values above 10. So we only want to train this model on the ages that are above 10. So that's what I did to filter our data set. We generated this code down here, and then I run this code to use it, carry forward in the rest of my analysis. And this abalone data frame, which I created here, is what we're going to use. So what we're doing here is we're making a model that predicts the age of this abalone here based on these attributes. And so now that I've made my data frame using Mito, I am going to split it into a train data set and a test data set run all of these, just to prepare my data a bit more, and then I'm going to train my model 
on the train data in 10 epochs. And then that's on the training set. And then on the test set from my data, from my data frame, I will run it here. And we'll see our, you know, the, the value of our model. So we can see that we're you know, diminishing this loss here by a good amount um, and then evaluating that test portion of the data set, and so we can see that our model is reducing error by a pretty good amount. Uh, finally, I want to show you how you can access MITRE for yourself to you know, use MITRE to, um, to prepare data sets for your own models, or clean data, or manipulate data in whatever way you need to, and be generating that Python syntax as you do it. So I will go here. This is our documentation, docs.trimed.io. Um, you can go to the installation tab. And you can download MITRE for yourself super simply following these instructions here. 